Sometimes people ask me, what do you do when things go wrong in a helicopter? That's where emergency procedures come into play. To practice some of those emergency procedures and make sure, make sure I stay sharp, I'm here with a guy that I fly with sometimes, a dude named James Baker. Rogue Aviation, I'm the chief pilot here out of Orange County, John Wayne, and now here in Long Beach. We met at the Robinson Safety Course. We did. And so uh, you also do training for Robinson as well. Since we're doing emergency training, I'm gonna focus on the flying part rather than the hosting part. So from this point forward, we're just gonna fly and you guys are gonna join us. Uh, let's go fly and do some emergency procedures. Long Beach Tower, helicopter 284 Sierra Whiskey at Aeroplex request west forward load departure with Zulu. Helicopter 284 Sierra Whiskey, Long Beach Tower departure at Aeroplex at your own risk and west forward load departure approved. West forward load approved, 284 Sierra Whiskey. So for this flight, James and I wound up focusing solely on auto rotations. For those who don't know, if the engine of a helicopter stops running, the helicopter can glide to the ground using a technique called auto rotation, but only if the pilot immediately lowers the lever that controls whether the helicopter goes up and down right when the engine stops. That lever is called the collective and it's operated by the pilot's left hand. Beyond that, there are a bunch of other techniques involved in successfully auto rotating a helicopter to the ground. That's what we're going to work on during this flight. So let's just kind of see just where the current proficiency is. Let's see, you know, give me a countdown when you're ready to enter, of course. Okay. As a refresher, it's going to be a down right aft, then we roll the throttle. Yep. So let's just see how close you can get to the numbers 2, 5, right. Okay. And entering in 3, 2, 1. Okay, without a helicopter, you're finding that taking 2, 5 left or 2, 5 right. We're going to 2, 5 right for Force Air Whiskey. Awesome, thank you, sir. Little pump. Yeah, I'm gonna be way long. All right. Well, let's I don't just see. Yeah, let's just see where it goes. Just it's got a great glide going right now. Cool. Notice your speed. You've been getting 80 knots the whole Julia. time. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's turning base the runway two five left on the traffic. Okay, so starting to pull a little bit of that flare. Six five seven one zero turning uh, left downwind for runway two five left. And I started to match it up there. Cool. That was Just pretty... <laughs> thought. Yeah, a little far. Yep. <laughs> Good. Yep. But that's why we do this, right? Let's, that way we kind of get a baseline and exercises that we're going to work on today is specifically designed for that entry right there. Yep. Okay. okay. I'm going to enter a little earlier. Three, two, one. Down right aft. Hold that aft. As your RPM didn't even drop. In fact, you got a quicker rise there, right? Yep. So Just by get... loading up that disc. So I'm going to aim for that 70. Okay. Looking pretty good. Let's hold it there. Yeah. Look at that. So look at that. 70. So if you start thinking about your flare point, would this be a little early? No, I think oh. it'd be okay. Start your baby flare. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then uh, more, yeah. more, more, more. There you go. More, more, more. There we go. Boom. Cool. Right there. Okay. And so we're doing the power recovery autos and how would that setup have worked? Would that have looked pretty good if we were actually going all the way to the ground? That setup would look pretty good. I'd probably want to hold that flare a little longer or may have a little bit more aggressively bled off the rest of that speed just so I didn't have as much run on speed. But yeah. knowing we were doing a power recovery, didn't really worry about that. Gotcha. Um, you know, hard surface, not bad to have a little run on speed, but it's still going to put a little extra wear and tear on the aircraft, yeah. right? All right, so this one I'm going to purposefully enter late. Okay. All right. You're going to notice I'm still going to add aft in the entry, even though we're going to enter at a lower speed. Okay. Combat traffic, this is SS65010, cleared runway 25. So at this point, left. we're easily going to overshoot, right? Definitely. All right, three, two, one, down right aft. And so we're going to just, we're going to bleed our speed off because we have the altitude to play with. Yep. So it's uh, almost vertical. We've got yeah, a little bit of forward, but. A little bit. Pretty vertical. Is your angle coming in? You start seeing it? Yep. Yeah, I see it. Now, remember, I said earlier, this increase of airspeed. Look at our look at our VSI. We're yeah. actually getting a higher rate of descent, right? Yep. But that's all part of my trajectory that I'm looking to gain. So there we go. No big deal. A little low. Now we got 70. Now I got my energy, so I can control my flare. Ah, oh, beautiful. And here we are, right to my spot. Level, nice and slow. That's easily a full down. You could see I, I really just let it come down as slow as possible. Yeah. If that wasn't power on, 
We had a nice level attitude. We really just let it drop a little bit, like a hover auto, wait, pull the cushion land. Yeah. We're gonna do the same thing. 1200. We're gonna enter late purposefully. I'm yep. just gonna talk you through the flying part, part right. of that. We're slowing down so we can intersect a uh, favorable approach line because there's no way we're gonna hit our target if we just keep a good steady right. auto. Usually it throws fixed wing pilots off quite a bit because it's just, you know, it's ingrained in them. Airspeed, do not lose that. Do not go below a certain amount of speed. And here we are, we're roughly oh, 25 knots. Right. And I want you to just first focus on the entry, down right aft, and then we just add the aft, get the entry set, and then we'll worry about the second step. Got All right. It. So that's pretty steep. We're gonna count down, ready? Yep. And three, two, one, down right aft, we roll. All right, now go with your bleed. Just bleed off that speed. We need to see the helicopter that we're losing some angle there. And you'll start, you can now feel how it's starting to the drop more. Yep. There we go. We're gonna let it drop. You can adjust as RPM just a little bit. If you need a little left pedal to see your numbers, get, oh, actually, I'm good. Out in the way. Good. All right, tell me when you think we should start getting some speed. Now. Go get it. So how, how aggressive do we get with that nose down? Go get it. It's, we're, we haven't unloaded the rotor system, so we don't have to worry about any aggressive pushovers. You know, just nice and, you don't want to do hard, just nice and efficient, right? Get that 70. Now we go we and start getting that nose set up for that final. flare profile. Okay. Go ahead to your little baby flare there. Little baby flare. Right? Okay. You fed the rotors, or RPMs are stable. Now finish it. Eyes outside, level. Huh. So uh, what's fun is that um, there's some work there I have to do on where I'm looking, because I, I keep wanting to like cross-reference with this yep. stuff, and really it is about where you're looking outside. Outside and here. Let yep. this compass, let's start calibrating your eyes to understand every movement, you know, a certain amount of movement is five knots, 10 knots, 15, right? Yeah. And once you start getting an idea of, you know, just how that movement translates to airspeed, start trying to make this your primary control for airspeed. Then that way, when you're looking for your RPM, make sure on the green, you'll start being able to just through your peripheral glance and notice that your airspeed and be able to match that up without having to individually look at each. Uh, in terms of uh, intersecting that line for approach, were my instincts uh, okay for when to start that nose? Did we make the spot? We did make the spot. We did. Um, so I would say yes, they are okay. now. That's going to change, right? That's going to yep. change with our wind components. Totally. We wouldn't be doing it at that same point if we were dealing with 15 knots of wind. Yeah. Right? Variety is tempting, but I'm really enjoying doing some repetitions. Yeah. Cool. So uh, we're at 1,200. Is this a good speed for entry? We're going to wait. Yeah, speed's fine. We're yeah. going to wait. I'm going to enter you a little later on this one. Copy. Yeah. Yeah. And three, and three two, two, one, enter. For a left cross and departure. All right, That's so you're going to have to bleed through that a little quicker. One second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At this speed. But notice, now that you're starting to get your added to your entry with aft in it, and then you start bleeding speed, notice how you get an even breaker climb. Let's try to go zero, almost zero. Let's zero okay. that out. Cool. You might even drift back just a hair. Yeah, you so can see the rate difference. Of descent. Yeah. Yeah. Now go get your, let's wait for it. Start getting your speed. Did you do that little trim on purpose? Yeah. Okay. Start leveling off for your flare profile. We're going to be a little less speed on this one, but that's okay, right? We have our angle. We have, we can make our spot. Okay. All right. Eyes outside. Heading with the pedals. Yeah. So that felt a little uncomfortable just because it was so late, and then getting that vertical component. But we still made spot. All right. And three, two, one, enter. Okay. Getting that aft. Little uh, bump. See that rise. Leading it off, and then uh, yeah, let's see what happens as we uh, try and make it semi-vertical. Is it uh, so? I'm cross-referencing as occasionally glancing out the side just to kind of see. Because you don't have a ground reference, right? Yeah. Is yeah, that yeah. is that cool? Yeah. Well, this is that same thing where it's like nose starts to go left a little bit. So yeah. I feel like right about. Uh, I feel like we're going to be long here, but let's see. Let's what see happens. what happens. And that's part of learning the angle, right? Trying to. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely going to be long. Then uh, bringing that back. All right, pause and stop here for a second. Let's just do a stabilized hover, left pedal turn, and just kind of look at our spot and see our sure. distance. All right, turn left. Look. 
could have been way further, but yeah, we're about what, 200 yards roughly off of that. Yeah, and you know, I kind of felt that it was going to be wrong when I started pushing forward. And okay, so what do you think you could have done differently in that scenario? I think hold the uh, the, the vertical a little bit longer, just uh, delay that um, you know forward airspeed dive. Uh, I think that's a pretty obvious thing. And then also a couple other tools, I suppose. Like it doesn't seem like there's a lot of room here to necessarily do S turns, but maybe trim out of trim. Yeah, could have maybe thrown a little bit out of trim just to cap off a little extra of that altitude. Okay, can okay. I hand you the controls for a sec? Sure. Your My controls. controls. Your controls. My controls. Very quickly, uh, this video is sponsored by Flying Eyes Sunglasses. As James is uh, expertly flying my RD44, I'll point out that Flying Eyes are made out of a material called brazilamide that is patented and only Flying Eyes has it. That means you can bend them like this. That means very thin temples that fit very conveniently underneath noise canceling headsets, which means no temple pain and better noise cancellation. If you would appreciate aviation grade eyewear, whether you're a pilot or you have an active lifestyle, let's say you wear headphones or a motorcycle helmet, click the link in the description below. You the promo code Mike and you can save 10% on flying eyes. Good good flying why I did that. Uh, and you know what? This is the first time I've ever tried these glasses. I totally forgot I had them on. You, you don't even it's like, you don't you like, don't even feel it. Like you're they're, not wearing them. Yeah, it's uh they're really I'm, I'm a believer. I think I'm gonna have to buy a pair and I'll use that code afterwards. Use the promo code Mike and save 10%. <laughs> So the recoveries we've been doing have all been power recoveries, and the reason why we do that, even though it's not fully realistic, is because it's very common for people to make mistakes when doing full down um, auto rotation uh, practice. That said, there is some value in doing those full downs, depending on uh, who you've got as the instructor. You have a lot of experience with it, so as we come into the uh, Long Beach Airport here, you're going to demonstrate a full down auto, and if you don't mind, I'll stay on the controls with you lightly just to kind of see how that goes. Absolutely. Three, two, one. I mean, that looks like a pretty good approach there. I see you sidestepping a little bit. All right, we're committed. Rolling to detent. A starter bleed. I'll level it. We wait. A little pull. And then we can just finish it off right at the end. Right to our spot. Very cool. A, right. high five. Uh, B, there's more momentum in the rotor system than you might expect. Yeah. And how soft was it compared to like a hover auto? Uh, better than my hover auto, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much brought it to almost a complete stop here. I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed with my heading. <laughs> maybe, maybe it could have been a little bit straighter and a little off to the right, but <laughs> hey, we, you know, we were walking away from it, so it's good, right? Okay, so that's a look at some of the emergency procedures we train for in helicopters. I don't know, what do you guys think? Did you get something out of this? Did you enjoy this? Should we do more of this? Should I sync up with Rogue Aviation to do more of these kinds of videos? If so, tell us in the comments section. Hey, thanks for the flight, man. You got it. And you guys, can we try five? <laughs>